Dollhouse is an indie PS4 and PC game that was recommended to me by my friend Sean. He also suggested that I cover Carmageddon 64 back in the day. And I might need to stop taking recommendations from Sean because Dollhouse is freaking awful! The game is set during 1950s Hollywood, and we're told that this is based on a true story. We see an actress named Marie headed to a movie premiere while a voice talks about how she survived some massive ordeal despite the fact she's still struggling to get roles. You didn't get the role, but you were able to do something else, for better or worse. You survived. I don't know, there are also weird lines about how she hasn't been out for a while, and needing to face something that she couldn't before, just kind of making you scratch your head. And add in a quote that doesn't seem to mean anything, for good measure. And then we see a little girl walk into their premiere and she says that she's Marie's daughter, only she says that Marie is actually a detective, not an actress, and then there's an explosion. Mommy? I found a way out this time. The first level loading screen talks about a patient with amnesia, because that hasn't been done a million times, and the little girl talks to you that she has found a way out. From what? I don't know. You wake up in a room with a nurse named Rose giving you directions over the radio that the little girl told you not to trust, and then you pick up your own eyeball and fix it with a repair kit. So, you're a robot? I thought this was based on a true story, what the hell? Rose talks about how your memories are being infected and needing to discern the truth to escape this facility that you're locked inside, which it will stop at nothing to keep you from remembering, and then you're in a gigantic hedge maze being attacked by what I presume are other robots shaped like mannequins for some reason. Show of hands. Who's lost? Okay. <sighs> Best guess at this point is that you're playing as an actress who lost her daughter, and this whole game is some mind palace crap where she's trying to cope with the loss, with the game leaning on that whole, it's imaginary and nothing's real deal, to explain why we can write anything we want and it doesn't have to make sense. Why not? It worked for Flowers Are Dead, but don't shut the video off yet because unlike Flowers Are Dead, this game has actual gameplay. Really astoundingly terrible gameplay. Every level in Dollhouse is a maze where every single corridor lacks terrain and looks friggin' identical, and you have basically zero cues to help with navigation. Which, at least that makes editing this video easier since nothing ever friggin' happens and I don't need to be choosy about my footage. The objective is to get to the changing room because, vague Hollywood metaphor, but to get into the changing room you need a master key, and the master key is hidden in the lost room, but the lost room is also locked. To get in there you need to wander around the halls finding film reels, but the film reels themselves don't actually do anything. You need to take them to blue machines to convert them into memories, which THEN you can use to get into the lost room. But the game still doesn't actually cough up the key when you get into this room, you then have to, quote, play its game, where you wander around the maze some more, looking for even more items to solve a puzzle. In this first level, you're looking for merry-go-rounds where you stop a rabbit in the middle of a flashlight, and THEN you can go to the lost room and finally get the key to the exit. Are you noticing a pattern here? The entirety of the gameplay boils down to you wandering in gigantic aimless circles, just hoping that you stumble across what tends to be over a dozen different hidden objectives per stage. And yes, it gets really freaking boring really freaking fast! The levels are infested with mannequins that chase after you and deal damage, though you have quickly regenerating health and they only move when you're not looking at them. You have some kind of flash power that kills the mannequins, which... I don't look that bad naked, do I? Except the flash is powered by items that you pick up called charges, and my first crack at this level, I couldn't find any damn charges. So I ended up leading a conga line of these damn mannequins that you can't do anything to shake through the level, taking damage every time I tried to move. You have a catalog of special abilities and buffs that you can equip, like revealing objects, increasing your stamina, healing faster, and you have to pick two at the start of the game when you have no idea what any of these do. Turns out one of the buffs gives you a free charge every 30 seconds, recharging literally your only attack that you need to kill mannequins, disarm traps, and take down false walls. So yeah, this buff is absolutely mandatory to equip, or the game breaks itself nigh unplayable right out of the starting gate. Sheesh. 
Another teeny tiny little detail that the game does not tell you a single damn thing about, every level has some lady slasher villain stalking the halls, and if she catches you, she insta-kills you. And because the game is trying to run some kind of permadeath mechanic, if you die, you lose your inventory and your progress. Unless you can find the chalk outline of where you died to get back your stuff, which, <laughs> good luck! Do you have any idea how confusing and frustrating it is being forced to completely start a level over with absolutely no clue what you did wrong? Is this supposed to be scary? Cause I'm just pissed off! You have to figure out on your own how a lot of the game works. Using a flash on the pursuer stuns her for a second so that you can slip by, and there's a power in my inventory that hides you from the pursuer for 8 seconds. The perfect ability to squeak on past! Until I discovered that the hide ability is glitched and does nothing. Yeah, this game's buggy as hell on top of everything else, between frequent audio and visual glitches and an entire level with horrid frame rate issues, but we'll get more into that pile of worms later. Anyway, when you get to the dressing room, you're given a script for a movie because vague Hollywood metaphor. The first one is about a woman in therapy whose daughter Emily went missing, she got a fake child back, and everyone insists that the imposter is real. She hires the detective Marie, who finds seven suspects connected to the conspiracy. Okay, I'm lost again. Are we playing as the detective unraveling a conspiracy in some big evil lair, or are we playing as the actress coping through her trauma? And reaching the exit still doesn't end the damn level, because now you have to run back to the level entrance with Lady Slenderman in hot pursuit. And then to end the level, you edit the memories that you've collected together into a movie. I'm just gonna skip ahead here, literally all you're doing in this little end level minigame is selecting buffs and a debilitation for the next level, but every slight little thing in this game is buried under so much obfuscating pretentiousness, it took me a few levels before I figured out what this is, before I had pieced together the game's basic mechanics. Like, this is a rock simple clone of Slender that the dev has done everything in their power to make as complex looking and incomprehensible as possible in a desperate effort to look deep. You're told that the game is six levels long, and each level has, well, basically a different wall texture and a different Slender Gal Pursuer enemy. At each level, you do the exact same thing. Find film reels, take to memory machine, use to open lost room, solve puzzle, go to exit, run back to entrance. And by the second and third levels, I started figuring out a lot of things that the game doesn't explain. The game does have checkpoints to keep you from having to beat huge stretches of the level in one go. It's just to get those checkpoints, you have to find these big anonymous red doors you don't know what they do, and spend a memory to get inside. Every time you enter one of these safe rooms, the game saves your progress, so if you find some memories, partially unlock the lost room, and duck into a safe room, you don't have to start over again if you die. Again, rock simple game made to look as complicated as possible. Oh, and I found an equipable skill called Split that literally does exactly what the hide ability does, only this one isn't glitched! The hitch with each level is that the enemies take more flashes to kill, making that free charge skill even more mandatory, and the pursuer of each level has a special power. And the different pursuers are so wildly unbalanced that the one I fought in level 2 is one of the strongest in the game. See, you need to use the flash to clear out enemies and walls, and Pursuer V has, I'd say, a 25% chance of spawning directly in your face any time that you use a flash, giving you a couple of seconds to react before you're just insta-killed out of nowhere. Not that the game tells you that! You're not clued into each Pursuer's special power unless you stumble across tiny dolls to scan by sheer luck in the levels. So yeah, level 2 was a complete hellhole having to deal with this colossal pile of bad game design, I tell you. Yeah, punishing you for using a game-critical ability is one of many red flags that this developer didn't know how their own game works. But level 2 was a nightmare for another reason, the puzzle that you have to solve. The puzzle for level 2 gives you the clue, what time is it, Mr. Wolf? There are four clocks in this room that you can interact with, and four famous movies listed above the clue. I thought maybe one of those movies has a character named Mr. Wolf in it, and you have to enter in the time on the clocks, or match up each clock to one of the movies. Nuh-uh. Because all the levels and puzzles are procedurally generated at random, I couldn't even look up the answer to this or any other puzzle, and I eventually figured out the moon logic you need to reach this answer is... 
Pretty astounding. Each clock corresponds to a mannequin, and each mannequin represents one of six actresses. And you match up the mannequins with the movie posters in this room to figure out the name of each mannequin. Then you go back out into the maze looking for showtime billboards writing down the time that each actress's movie is playing. And these answers are spread across four different boards. The puzzle sounds simple enough in hindsight, except I spent probably over half an hour wandering this damn maze over and over, and I couldn't find two of the movies listed anywhere! I have eventually realized two of these mannequins don't correspond to any of the posters, so I just had to write all the movie show times down and guess them one at a time until I got the right answer! For all the hell I went through to solve this puzzle, I'm seeing this pile of shit through to the end now! I'm invested! And just in case the game wasn't dickish enough, there are two little girls wandering around the halls at random. One shows you where the memories are stashed, the other spawns a pursuer. And the evil one was showing up a lot in this damn level. She's not hard to avoid, just again, not told how the damn game works. And there's no point at all in trying to track enemies because mannequins will respawn constantly, and the pursuers will, in plain sight, just blatantly walk through walls or teleport. As the game goes on, you gradually start piecing together that the story revolves around six actresses. At the end of each level, you edit a script for one of the actresses reading a part, and when you're cutting together your movie at the end of each stage, the actress that you use the least is cut from the production and becomes the pursuer of the next level. It's meant to be like a Hollywood casting call where you're narrowing down the auditions by killing the actresses. Because metaphor. Except the memories that you collect are completely randomized and I never had any remote degree of control over who the slasher was for each level, so there's another system that doesn't work like intended. Each end level script is about a mother with a different thing happening to her daughter, who's always named Emily. One has the daughter cutting herself, one has the mom having an affair, one has the mom caring for her niece because her father is a drunk. I kept really careful notes trying to piece together this grand puzzle that the game teases out. Spoiler warning, the game basically slaps you for actually paying attention later on. So level 2 was supposed to be a theater, level 3's endlessly cloned hallways are movie set themed. This chapter was actually really easy because the Slendy Pants knockoff in this level, near as I can tell her power is to spawn if you use a key. Which I almost never had to do. The only real trouble I had was finding the exit once I had the master key, but I just ask myself, if I were a douchebag making a slender ripoff, where would I put the exit? And the answer was always, as far as humanly possible from the entrance. And voila, I always found it. You do get a few lifelines to help you out in the levels. You can use chalk to mark up to three spots in the level to help with navigation. They just disappear if you don't save afterwards. I also unlocked enough inventory slots to add an ability for infinite recharges of stock, which is the ammo that powers your special abilities. So now I can become invisible to my stalker pretty much any time that I want. You don't need all the memories in a level to finish said level, and if you find spares, you can take them to a green machine to unlock new skills, or a red machine to unlock new inventory slots with XP. It's a good system that's wasted on such a limited, crappy game. Oh, and because we're ripping off Slender, you have a flashlight to help you navigate levels, except you can just crank up the in-game brightness a little bit and perfectly illuminate all the hallways, making the flashlight completely useless. Every level is filled with traps that block hallways or damage you from the floor, and in the hospital, these traps near constantly glitch into being invisible so that I was constantly getting hung up on empty air. Sometimes with Slender Gal in hot pursuit. And speaking of glitches, because the dev would have to be an imbecile for this to be on purpose, every time you die, the game unequips all but three of your skills without telling you. So if you forget or didn't realize that the game screwed you when you weren't looking, you dash out without abilities that are mandatory for the game to function, and you get slaughtered. Level 5 is a hotel, and this was a waking nightmare, man. The pursuer for this level not only clones herself, but if she gets close to you, she inflicts damage, disabling all your abilities and your flash, completely tying both arms behind your back so that you have no means of defending yourself. And I don't know if I was wearing a bitch magnet or something, but she was on my ass the entire damn level, popping up like every other minute. I died a lot to this con using level design. 
This stage has dead ends everywhere, and with the slasher disabling your abilities to slip past her, you're hosed! And that wasn't even the worst part. The puzzle for this level has you running around the hotel looking for three very specific paintings, so I ran around like half an hour getting butchered by a cheating ass Slendy clone because one of the paintings that I needed was hidden in a locked room in the far corner of the map! Go to hell! At least now I'm finally on the last level. Chapter 6 is a house, and the boss's power here is that she can teleport to wherever you picked up your last memory. A power that does literally nothing to you aside from playing an obnoxious jump scare noise about every minute while nothing happens. Let's just add this to the growing pile of game developers didn't know how their own game works. The only problem with this level was that there was only one blue memory machine, and it took me forever and a half to find it. Plus, more bugged out invisible walls everywhere from traps failing to render properly. But finally, I've reached the end. The nurse talks about how your treatment is finally complete. You see flashes of the actress's life with her daughter Emily as narration plays telling you that you can't change what happened, but you can change how you remember it. Because much like writing movies, it's all about perspective. Which is stupid and wrong on about five different levels, but whatever. And then you're taken to another cutting room with a script reading that the others must die so that you can live, with mannequins representing the other actresses all trussed up. You go to end the game and then Nurse Rose appears and kills you. Wait, what? Chapter 7! <laughs> you suck of shit! You told me I was out, damn you! So, what? The actresses are all split personalities and the nurse has been manipulating you into killing them so that she can take over? And this is like the ending of Manhunt 2 where you have to take over from the evil personality? What? I can't show you hardly any of Chapter 7 because this level is basically a sex dungeon. The walls are solid plastered in pictures of naked women. You enter what are very obviously prison cells with lady mannequins tied up in BDSM poses, and the pursuer of the level is just a naked woman. Seriously, you can see her country of origin is Brazil, if you catch my meaning. Oh, and the mannequins of this level can't be killed, but you can hide in a safe room and most of them will get bored and wander away. This pursuer's special power is that she can block off hallways with unbreakable walls, and in a level that's already built mostly out of corridors with few to zero turns, she's just north of being a complete game breaker. I only beat this level because the game's procedural generation just happened to plonk the memory machine, safe room, and lost room mere inches away from one another so I could save scum my way to the end. What's hilarious is the lost room in level 7 is covered in post-it notes asking what the story is, which is just a bit too close to what actual players were screaming to be a coincidence. So in case you haven't figured out the game's plot by now, and I know you have, at the end of level 7 they just sit you down and flat ass explain what's been going on. Like all great art has to. You're playing as an actress whose daughter Emily was killed in a fire, only she wasn't actually killed, she was just disfigured. When Emily returned home, the actress had a complete mental breakdown, believed that Emily was an imposter, and she went insane. We're forced to sit through an extensive sequence of this woman viciously and constantly abusing her daughter, who I remind you is a horribly injured and disfigured burn victim! Gee, I'm so glad I stuck to the end of this game! The actress eventually went so cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs that she lost her career, which she also blames and abuses the daughter for, until she ends up in some kind of mental care, it's not made clear how. The events of all the levels up to this point have been the actress suffering from some kind of identity disorder, to where she's pretending that she's actually one of several characters that she's played in movies, all while spending time with an imaginary version of her daughter who has been keeping her inside the hallucination. The therapy has been sort of mentally killing off the extra personas to uncover the actress's true repressed personality so that she can return to the real world. Because yeah, that abusive bitch sure deserves another chance. Also, this treatment takes 50 years to complete! Like, most of the actress and her daughter's lives have been wasted on this venture. This game is depressing, man!
So literally nothing in the plot up until the last two levels actually means a damn thing, and despite all the feints and misdirects, my guess 10 minutes in was pretty much dead on. The entire game's been the imagination of some woman coping with tragedy and exploiting the excuse of, it doesn't have to make sense because none of it's real. I get that the Hollywood trappings are because you're trying to make a point that memories are just made up movies in your head, stupid as that point is. It's probably set in the 50s because based on a true story, and I get that the enemies and pursuers are trying to kill you as a metaphor for her mind preventing you from escaping to painful reality, but I have other questions about the game's own internal logic. Why is the mysterious it that serves as the omnipresent evil, sometimes the real life actress, sometimes the actress personas, and sometimes the real life Emily, why is the seventh level, where the slasher very explicitly represents Emily, a big porny sex dungeon? Why does Nurse Rose kill you at the end of chapter six if she wants you to finish and escape? Why are all the enemies mannequins? Why are the mannequins and traps and memory blocks all disabled by what I'm pretty sure are camera flashes? Why are you a robot whose health is represented by a broken eye? If both you and it are the the same person, then why does it force you, that is itself, to play games that are actually really obnoxious puzzles? If the two girls that spawn in the levels are the real and fake Emily's, then why does the fake one help you escape if she wants to keep you here? If the puzzles are all children's games, why does one involve stabbing corpses? Why do the pre-level introductions talking about a patient with amnesia burns and returning to work sound like it's alternating between the actress and Emily at random? Why does level 8's intro say that the actress agreed to pay for cosmetic surgery for Emily if said actress has been in cuckoo land for 50 years yeah your excuse of well it's all imaginary it doesn't have to make sense is bullshit and it feels like huge chunks of this got rewritten only at the last second the last level is kind of cool if only because it's different you're in a burning building and you have to decide whether to take the easy bad ending grab a key and run off with the imaginary emily and stay not so or get the more difficult good ending where you take over the seven pursuers and use them to kill off the fake Emily that's kept you trapped in your head for decades. I don't know why this eliminates the split personalities permanently, but hell, I did not come all this way to get a bad ending. Finally done with this crap. And... The game crashed! <laughs> you can't make this up, damn! My name is Rivera, and this is my story. How it starts, and how it ends. So the actress returns to reality, we see a montage of her being shit to her disfigured daughter, but after 50 years of her daughter living in hell, they make amends, now the bulk of both their lives have been wasted, and they turn the whole thing into a movie. Whoop de freaking do. Oh, and the memory editing machines that you were using apparently actually exist, based on a true story! I looked up the bad ending online. It's the exact same ending, only she's making one of the made-up movies and she thinks it's still the 50s. That totally would have been worth having to play through the entire game a second time because the game overrides your save file. And one last glitch for the road, when you finish the game you're supposed to unlock a mode called Final Take where you have to beat the game in one life. It did not unlock for me. Not that I ever would have used it anyway. Dollhouse is bad. Dollhouse is really bad. Let's set aside the plot for a minute and just focus on the gameplay. It's just four to five hours of running around a maze hoping you trip over your objectives while weak enemies that you can easily take down follow you around. It's a poor knockoff of Slender that horribly fails as a horror game because it has next to no atmosphere and the only tension comes from how annoying the game is. The dirt simple mechanics are barely explained leading to a few levels of you wandering around hopelessly lost and confused. No wonder less than 2% of the game's players actually bother to finish it. There's just nothing worthwhile to do in this game other than trying to decipher out the plot. I will admit that I was fairly compelled to keep going in the game just to see the reveals of what was going on, but even if you can make sense of all the obtuse symbolism, it's just not a satisfying mystery. It's an interesting premise for a story that's told horribly, and by the end the whole thing just feels pretentious for how little there actually is to the game. So how does it fare in the great pretentious off of PS4 games I've covered on this channel? Erica, The Quiet Man, and Flowers are dead? 
I don't know. Maybe I'll make a viewer poll and let you decide. I hear YouTube's algorithm likes polls anyway.